Good evening, everybody. How are you? Evening, Fred. Evening, Wayne. Mark. Derek. DL Woodart. Uh, Frederick D. Good evening. Let's go back on the chat. Hello, Matt. Matt Harbour. How are you? Paul Smith and Steve Ash. How are you all? Um, as usual, could you just let me know that you can hear me and also that you can see me? If someone could just put in the comments, I would appreciate it. Andre, how are you? Evening, Dave. John M. Good evening, how are you? <laughs> Good man. John's been turning for the last three hours and he's got to take a break. Stuart, how are you? Good evening. Evening, Tony. Jackie Wilder, good evening. Dave Thompson, good evening. Paul Smith, good evening. Steve Robbins, hello Steve, how are you? That's good, thank you. Mike Dole, good evening. Evening Bobby, I might have said good evening to you once. <laughs> thank you John, everybody's saying the sound and vision is good, so that's nice to know. Michael Stratton, good evening Mick, how are you? Muriel sends her love and thanks you very much for the box. She's over the moon for it, with it. Evening, Simon. Tony, good evening. Mark Cardew, good evening to you. Victor Brown, hello, how are you? <coughs> James, Wessex Technical, good evening, how are you? Well, I've got four or five minutes to go before we start. Just considering saying good evenings. I'm actually hoping um, Mr. Oliver turns up. <laughs> um, hi, Phil. How are you? Brian Osby. Good evening, sir. How are you? Andrew. Good evening to you. The Dutch Turner. Good evening, Mike. Good evening, Mike. They said good evening to me. Good evening to you, the Dutch Turner. I don't know your name, I'm afraid. Brian Anderson. Good evening. Yes, I am, Steve, thanks. Everything's fine, mate, at the moment. Evening, Paul. The Turning Trucker, good evening, how are you? Are you watching while you're in your truck, or have you got an evening off? Evening, John. John Mooney, how are you? Have a quick drink. All right, Mike. And all right, okay. I'll call you Mike then, the Dutch Turner. <clears throat> Hello, Ronnie. Good evening. How are you? Again, I think numbers might be a little bit less tonight because uh, Mr. Carroll's on it, or is currently on at uh, seven o'clock, I believe. So, Wayne Fennell, Good evening. How are you, sir? Evening, Saba. How are you? Oh, nice. You're on holiday, Mr. Trucker. That's great. Steve Jeremiah, good evening to you. How are you? Nice to see you. Jennifer Stroughton, good evening, my dear. How are you? Chris Nunn, good evening. Ah, John Mooney. He says, hello, I'm in my truck in Austria. <laughs> great stuff. I'm watching this on my phone and laptop. Delay is quite long. Vision and sound very good. Thanks very much. I th yeah, the delay normally is around uh, anything between six and ten seconds, unfortunately. JP Woodwork. Jamie, how are you? Nice to see you. Are you keeping well, young man? Well, I hope everybody's had a good week since last week. Things on the lockdown seem to be easing a bit. Whether or not it's too soon or not, I don't know. Yes, thanks, James. I am well. Thank you, sir. We'll see how well I am when I've uh, butchered this goblet. Okay. 
Okay, another few minutes. I'll just go into the. Uh, I'll put a little picture up there while I uh, have my little vape. Good evening, Leroy. How are you? Far, far too soon, <laughs> says James. No, it's not, mate. No, it's not. It's never too soon. Uh, Salama, Salama. Is that the way you pronounce it? I doubt it. Good evening. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming. And Chisky Wood Creations. Hello for Eastern North Carolina. Well, hello to you. Well, I'll be using um, a little bit of wood from um, Idaho this evening. Colin King. You're in. <laughs> Colin King says he's in. Well, you obviously can read the chat. He's in the shed with his coloured fingers. And very nice colour they were too. Evening, Gareth. How are you? James, butchery, new wood turning to... Yes, butchery, yeah, I, I, I'm a well-known wood butcher. Yeah, I've, I've got things to prove it as well. OK, it's 7.30. I think we'll make a start. Ivor Longmore, good evening, how are you? All right, Nigel. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it being over in one piece, or three pieces, as the case may be. Right, escape. Hi mate, how are you doing this warm weekend? Extremely well, thank you. And yourself, nice to see you. Hiya Kim. Joseph, hello my friend. Joseph King, how are you? Mike, voice of my favourite, please sing while working. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cassava says, I've got a nice voice. Well, the thing is, I'm Welsh, you see. Uh, all Welsh people can sing, but unfortunately some of us can't sing in tune and I fall into that category. Tom, good evening, how are you? Right, I think we'll get started. What I intend to do tonight is a three-piece goblet, and it's an intended one. The good thing about these three-piece goblets is you can use up bits of scrap, and you can mix and match. You don't have to stick it together. You can just make a load of bases, a load of um, goblet bowls and stems, and mix and match until you decide what you want to do. And you can even do off-centre stems without the problem of the bowl flying off. And there are a lot of um, different ways that you can approach it. What I'm using tonight, I'm going to be using this piece of um, Canadian maple that was very kindly given to me by my good friend from Canada, and Dave Rothwell. And it is, uh, I've written it down here, it's two and a half inches square by just over six, just under six and a half inches long. Now out of that I'm going to be able to get both the cup and the base. So that piece of wood is going to yield two parts of the goblet. And then I'm going to be using a wood I have only just turned this afternoon a little bit, and it's called Vera wood. And that was very kindly sent to me by Chad Smith from Idaho quite a long time ago, sent me a chunk of it. And it is also known as Argentinian Lignum Vitae. It's very oily, it's very dense, and it turns very well. So I'll be using that, or a piece of wood similar to this, as the stem. So let's get started, unless... Mr. No, he hasn't turned up yet. Oh well, never mind. Woody, hiya, how are you? And Vicky Dyer, good evening. Duncan Barber, good evening. Martin, gentle turn, how are you? Russell Fillmore, Fillimore, thanks very much for coming. Good evening to you. Dave B, how are you? I think that's it. Now, I won't be looking at the chat, as you could appreciate, because I'm not high-tech like some of the guys, like Wayne and, and Ed have got people helping them. I'm on me, Todd. So I can't see the chat. So if you have any questions for me specifically, I will stop during the turning and ask for questions, if you have any. Um, and quite often, questions you may have could be answered in the chat window anyway. So what I'm going to do now is go to the overhead and... Um, 
on there we have a piece as I say of this Vera wood now what I'm the the, the basis of um, a three piece goblet as I say is that you will I will be turning the base and the cup from here and the stem from here I had a word with Helen Bailey quite a while ago now. I've done one before and I asked her because she does a lot of these um, where she puts the tenon, where she puts the mortise. What I find easiest for me is that there'll be a tenon and a mortise. In other words, a hole. I will drill a hole at this end, part it off with a tenon, and then drill a hole into the base into which the tenon will, tenon will go and then leave a tenon on the bowl of the goblet and that will fit into the hole I drill on the end of here. That's the theory. So let's get started. What I'm going to do to begin with, I'll be using a half inch spindle gouge to get rid of the meat if you like and then once I've done that I'll put the Jacobs chuck in and drill a six mil hole to receive the goblet. So I'm going to be turning at uh, 1500 revs here. I'm going to put the light on hopefully. Yeah, that should be okay. That's good. Okay, so basically just we want to It's not essential to get it round to begin with, but it makes things a little easier. That's going to be about the stem length. Now you can see now how, what a nice surface. What a nice finish this leaves. Now I'll just take the skew chisel and just very lightly This is just um, a half inch skew chisel. Okay, that'll be enough. It's not round completely, but I'm not really worried about that. So what I do now is to take out the live center, just for a minute, replace that with my Jacob's chuck in which I've got a six mil drill bit. Now, you don't need to go in too far. And the reason for that being is that when you start to shape and form the, what I call a fillet on here to accept the bowl, if you go in too far, you can run into the hole when you're actually turning it. And we don't want to do that. So turn the revs down ever so slightly. It's only a very small hole. Not very deep at all. That's all we need. Turn the lathe off. Take out the Jacob's chuck. And we won't need that now until we do the base. And just to give you that support, you can now put your live centre back in and bring that up and that gives you a nice bit of support then when you're turning the stem and everything will centre then around the hole you've just drilled. So again back to the half inch spindle gouge you could use a, uh, a bowl gouge if you so wish turn the revs up again and what I'm going to be doing here is just making what I call a fillet, which I would normally do on the base of my goblet bowls, but I can do it on here now. Let's turn that up a bit.
That just gives me that little bit of a feature that I like on my goblets. Okay, that's good. Just getting rid of wood now. Now because this does cut very well, I'd be using the skew for most of this because it leaves a nice finish as you can see. Now we're not going to go super thin. Now the hole is the hole is drilled to about that area there, so now I don't have to worry that I'm going to go down too far. Just want to get away from that little now I can go to Mr. Skew. Remember I did this at uh, Make a Central Wing <laughs> when it went flying. Now just Work your way down. You can see the, this is not because of my skew work, this wood is, as I say, very similar to um, lignum vitae. It's very, very dense, but it does leave a really nice finish almost off the tool. We will do a little bit of sanding. I've got a bit of a bump there, I don't like that. Let's get rid of that. Again, because the stem is quite thick, I'm not really worried about uh, sanding and finishing as I go, because it's pretty solid stuff. Just doing some light cuts here just to bring the stem down a bit more. A little, little bit of a bulge there. Yeah, that's better. Yep, 
one's pretty good. I think we'll just go down a little bit more. I think that'll be enough here. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so we've got the stem. What I want to do now, I'll be changing to my detail gouge with a 30 degree bevel on it. While the tailstock is still up, what I'm going to be doing, I want to put a bit of a, um, a dip there because that means then that the bowl will seat nicely. Now, while that's up, I can take a very gentle cut Now this is where you have to be extremely careful, obviously. Just want a very light. And just as a laugh, in case it goes flying, there's one I did earlier. <laughs> I just like that to go in a bit. And in fact, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do any hero moves. I shall bring the tailstock back and have another go in at a bit of a, a greater angle that's the one and then all I've got to do is just get rid of that little raised bit there that's lovely phew that went alright that's good okay so Sorry about the motorbikes. Uh, the next thing to do now is to part this off and leave a tenon. Now, as I said, that's a six mil hole. So what I've got here, I've got my dividers at slightly under six mil. So when I part off, it is important to get it as accurate as you can. So I'm just gonna bring the tailstock up again, just to sand this very briefly. I can start, I think, with, uh, we'll start with 240, and hopefully that will, the thing is, this will also show how oily this is, because it clogs, clogs the paper, it doesn't matter what paper you use. Um, again, as I say in these live demos, I'm not a speed merchant with regards to um, turning pieces, it's to show you the method as opposed to the finished piece. We'll hopefully get it half decent, but um, because of the time constraints, etc., I'm trying very hard to get my live streams down to uh, an hour and a half. It's not working though. <laughs> Still, I chat too much, I think. That's the problem. And as you can see already, that is already clogged. Get in a little bit. Talk amongst yourselves. See, once we part this off, the stem is done. Three twenty. Now the same, which I didn't do with the two forty actually, when you're doing. Uh, any spindles in my opinion the same sort of thing as like when you do a when you do a pen go with the grain and that gets rid of any radial marks you might have uh, 
I think what I'm going to do is just go to 320. I would normally start using Yorkshire grit now or uh, sand up to 600. But um, I shan't be doing that on this occasion. You'll be pleased to hear. So just up to 320. The skew chisel, <laughs> if you do a good job, leaves a very good surface anyway. So that's not too bad. So now a little bit of... Uh, Thin sanding sealer. Actually, no, we're not going to do that yet. Oh, I haven't decided. I've got to do, I've got to do the end. Let's finish the bit of detail on the end. I'm getting ahead of myself now. Now, bearing in mind that you're, I'm not able to. to blend in the base to the stem. So we're going to have to have a transition point. And what I'm going to do here, let's get rid of a bit of wood here. So what this wood is so oily, it's amazing. Get this to skew for that bit. I'll just blend that in today. Take my spindle gauge just to refine that a bit there. Yeah, that'll do, I think. And then what I can do here is make a bit of a That's all I want is just a little bit of a detail there because I won't be able to blend in, as I say, the stem to the base. You can if you've actually glued it in um, and then you can actually do the, the blending in that way if you wish. Now what I'm going to do is take a parting tool and form the tenon. And before I actually, let's just get that to the right level. Now that is the size of the tenon that will be going into the base when we've turned the base. All I need to do here, I don't know if you can see it, I've just got a little bit of a ridge there and I've just got to blend, uh, move that down. There we go, make that a bit round. And we've got that sort of convex. So I'll be parting off just there. So now I can just do a little bit of sanding. I'll just go straight to the 320, I think. Just so you can see the sort of a finish you get with this, uh, this Vera wood.
and because you would be ultimately gluing these things together you don't want to get any finish or anything on the tenon itself because that then will affect the glue let's turn that down ever so slightly as I say you can see you've got to keep using different bits of paper because it does clog up and I've tried it with Abernet even and even that clogs up so um, okay that'll do so now we just get a bit of uh, sanding sealer and uh, give it a and this should then show this wood it really is quite has quite a nice bit of figure to it it's a nice color and it should contrast nicely with the maple um, the thing is that as I say the beauty with this and I shall make sure that doesn't go on there the beauty of this uh, way of doing it is that you can use these you know bits of scrap and everything else and especially with me because I tend to mess up my goblets occasionally if I mess a bit up all I've got to do is turn another piece you know it's no problem and as I said this is one I turned earlier on as a as a, as a trial and um, yeah I think it's a great idea and as I say whoop, hang on I've lost me lost me mic excuse me with the rustling about that okay well um that's nearly yeah that should be okay it's a little hint i got off martin actually uh, about denibbing i don't use a scotch pad anymore just use your paper towel and you watch here you already start gets it nice and smooth and I don't know if the camera picks it up. There's a bit of a shine there as well. Especially if I turn the light off, I think you might see it better. No, that's no good. I can't see a damn thing. <laughs> okay, and I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, Hampshire Sheen high gloss on there. And then the stair will be done. And I always say of these lives, it's not the end finish. I would spend more time sanding and finishing and fiddling about. But it's to give you the idea. So what I'll do when, I, when I've parted this off, I'll put the maple on, turn it around, and then we'll have any questions for five minutes. Swack it up, should give it a bit longer really, but uh, it'll do for now. Not too bad a finish really, just down to uh, three twenty, and that was it. Okay, so now I'm just going to part this off. go so there's the tenant that will go into the stem uh, the base rather and then there is a bit of wax on there and there's the top into which the bowl will go right so I'll just mount up let's not get these mixed up I'll just change my chuck 
and then we'll mount up the piece of maple and then we'll have a little break for some questions. I've been meaning to get one of these for ages, the uh, Chuck Steb Centre, and I finally, finally done it. I think some of you know what happened. There you go. Okay, so that's that set up, ready to turn the round. Okay, we'll have a, a little break for a couple of questions. I'm back. Has um, Mr. Oliver come in, per chance? Because, uh, for those of you that don't follow me on social media, on Facebook, um, I ordered that uh, step zinder off of Ed Oliver, and it was delivered. And... This is what I received. I received the step center and I also received a ball of wool. And the reason for the ball of wool is that Ed and I have this joke is that I say sometimes I think I'll give up turning and take up knitting. So <laughs> he sent me this ball of wool. Um, it's a shame he's not here tonight actually because uh, I have a little prezzy for him. But anyway, that, that's, what I, that's how I got it. How do you like the truck? Yeah, uh, Bob Osterberg asked me, how do I like the truck step center? I think it's brilliant. I've only used it for a couple of days, but uh, in a situation like this, Bob, where I'm turning to round, turning a tenon, I merely just take it out of the chuck and put it straight into the jaws. There's no, no changing or anything else, which is great. Wayne the Wood Turner, for information about wood, check out the wood database on the internet. Yes, very good, Wayne. I, somebody was obviously asking about wood. So um, the wood database is a brilliant um, uh, website for woods from all over the world. Brian, just bought a new stem drive centre from Woodshed yesterday, not had a chance to use it. I've used stem centres and stem drives for many years and I, I, I love them. Um, but the, the truck step center, a step drive, is a boon. It's brilliant. James, <laughs> James Pritchard said, I bar Good evening, James, that I barred Ed Oliver. Yes, I did, but not, not really. Graham Lloyd, he's here somewhere, hiding, I believe. Oh, he is there, is he? Ah, right. Well, if Ed's there, um, from that ball of wool, hang on a minute, from that ball of wool, my wife has made this for Mr. Oliver. Ta da! <laughs> it doesn't suit me, but um, it'll suit Mr. Oliver and it'll keep his, um, his lack of hair on his head, keep his little head warm in the winter. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, just a bit of a laugh. That, that'll be going off to Mr. Mr. Ed. Ed's having his dinner back soon. All right, OK. When he comes back then, I'll... Good evening, Keith. How are you? I'll have to put it back on again. All right, OK, John. Thanks for telling me. I didn't know he was here. But I'll go through that uh, when he comes back. <laughs> uh, hope you're doing well, Patrick Bowers, the recovery machine. Hello, Patrick. How are you? Nice to see you, mate. Carl McCracken. That's very kind of you, Carl. Glad you've commented. First time on my channel. Thank you. <laughs> I'm honoured. Right. Yes, it was brilliant. A, a, a brilliant laugh, yes. So uh, he'll be getting that. I'm keeping the rest of the wall, mind you. He's not having all of it. OK, um, let's get on. And I'll have a chat with Ed when he's... And he's mind you... The way Ed eats, it won't take him long to finish his dinner, will it? Um, actually, Derek, um, 
Oh, I haven't got it here now. Yes, I have. Here we go. I, I'm, a knitting needle is never far from my workshop, actually. I always keep one there for digging things out. So uh, I have the knitting needle. I could say that I actually knitted that, but um, I don't think anybody would believe me because I didn't. What part of Wales were I born, James? I was born in Cardiff, James. Uh, yeah, Clandaff, actually. Steve Roberts, did your wife do a live stream when making it? <laughs> well, she has this saying, Steve, I'm sure you're aware that if she had a knitting needle and she came in here, she'd be sticking it after heating it up into her eyes. She said she'd rather stick needles in her eyes than get involved in helping me with a chat or anything to do with wood turning, to be honest with you. Uh, so... Um, that's why I do it on me told. It would be great, actually, if someone was watching the chat, then I could answer questions and chat while I'm turning, but maybe I need to concentrate anyway. So, um, hmm. When do I turn a mic? When are you going to do some string pull art with the wool? <laughs> well, I might do some, Wayne. I don't think I'll do it on camera, but I'll certainly, I'll, I've got to have a go at it. I'll have a go at it. Right, I'm going to have a quick, uh, a quick vape, so we'll go on to, we'll go on to that, so I can carry on talking. Hi Chris Cox, how are you? Jonathan Ash says, you always need a pokey, pointy, pointy bee thing in the show. You do indeed. Right, that's that. It's disgraceful, this habit, isn't it, eh? All right, we'll go back to the overhead now. So this piece of maple. Now it might be a bit blowy because I'm gonna, gonna be putting my respirator on. I think you can still hear me through it. And I'll bring this down around with a spindle roughing gouge. Just do it about 1300 revs, something like that. Now there are various ways of um, doing this. I just do it the normal way. And it does help always to make sure that your tool rest is secure. For the newer turners, even though you're roughing, move your body, keep everything. It's not square. No, it's square. Keep your body moving. Turn the lathe off as we always do, move the tool rest in nearer. That'll do. That'll do. Now the next thing is to form a tenon, which I'm going to do on this side. Now these are medium gripper jaws. They haven't got a dovetail. A dovetail. They are 
straight jaws with serrated edges, uh, serrate, serrations on the jaws. And they give a very, very good grip. Go down a tad more. Okay. Now we can take take that off for now. So remove the tail stock. Remove the stab. And place in the jewels. How quick was that? Yeah, I think that's fair. It's not quite, not quite. I'll tell you why I think that is actually. I uh, was doing some hollowing this afternoon and I don't think I lined it up properly. I didn't uh, line up the, the centers. It's not much off, but um, we'll just put that in there and then tighten up the jaws. So that should be more, there we are, up against the shoulder. Not too much pressure and tighten down. better just a bit of a it's not too bad so I can get rid of this as Ed calls it the elbow elbow stabber get rid of your live center because if that does hit your elbow that does hurt believe me and I've had it have I had it happen a few times okay so we're gonna have the cup here the reason I'm doing the cup at this, the, the, uh, at this end is because I can form a tenon. Then I'll part that off and then I can form the base and I can drill a hole in the base to receive the tenon on the stem. Just to remind you, we have a tenon on the, on the stem so the, the base will go into there with a hole in the upright and then the bowl will have a tenon to fit into the top of that mortise. So just to start with, actually very, very stupid really. No, it's not, we'll do it without it. Okay, I just want a very basic shape on the, uh, the uh, goblet cup. Nothing amazing, just a very basic shape. it. Now I'm going to be possibly using that much with regards to the the bowl. So if I say that will be about the size of the bowl. Then I got the uh, the tenon and then I can cut it off there. So I got all that to play with. Uh, I most probably won't even use all that but the other beauty of this method is that you do actually. Now because this is on video as it were, what I'm gonna do is bring up the tailstock for support while I'm doing the shaping. Because that's what you should really do. Bring up the tailstock every time you can. Okay, so let's get this round first. And just form a very basic shape.
is only a very general idea with regards to how much wood I'm going to use for this. I've got plenty to play with, so if I want to, as I am now, taking a bit more wood, it doesn't matter. Just move it away, waste wood. Okay, that's the basic shape, the basic shape. So what I shall do now is just get rid of that hump there. Let's change to a sharper blade. pretty good yeah I like that okay so now we're gonna hollow again take the center out because you don't want that jamming in your in your elbow okay now, I normally do a depth hole with the spindle gouge so I'll take my 3-8 spindle gouge now when you do this operation, you want your spindle gouge on the horizontal, on centre. So you want it there on horizontal. And literally go in a little bit on the side and then turn and go in. Check the depth. There we go, a bit further. And that should be just about it, I should think there a tiny bit more and that will be it so now we've got the slow moving wood out of the way now you can use a half inch spindle gouge you can use your 3 8 spindle gouge you can back hollow just drop the rest ever so slightly you can either back hollow, which is a very effective way. Let's change the camera angle. See if I had somebody working here, they could. There you go. Is that? Yeah, that's okay. So I'm just below center height, and I'm using um, that part, the left, just the left of the nose, and turning at about seven o'clock I should think and keeping it on the same plane as you go round. I would normally do it overhand but uh, that would get in the way of the camera.
Now this is all by feel, I'm not looking at it. take too much away. Now, let's have a look. It's not far to go now. This is a bit of a bit boring I'm afraid. And that's got nothing to do with the fact it's a 3 8 spindle gauge. That's just me. <laughs> Actually, it must probably need sharpening, so you'll have to bear with me a minute. I'll just pop over to the old sharpening system and give it a quick... needs wonder Not liking me today at all. Push cut now. This just gives a nicer finish. One more. Just like a bowl. Just use my little negative rake scraper just to this is what I made myself out of a little half inch um, round those scraper ideal for goblets boxes
use the round nose one just to get the little nib down the bottom out of the way. nearly an hour well I don't think that I'm going to put a finish on here because of time what I'm going to do is just what I would normally do here now is sand up to whatever you want to sand up either use Yorkshire grit and uh, the wax or finish of your choice I'm just going to make this a bit thinner obviously um, then put your finish on and away to go so on this occasion now what i'm going to be doing is just leaving it as is because as i say i want to show you the process as opposed to boring you too much with the finishing process so we'll go back to the overhead and i'm just going to bring up Don't really need it on this to be honest with you but it just the, the thing is if you get the opportunity of having that little bit of extra support use it and you will, won't regret it I mean, i'm not even doing a stem on this but it just gives that little bit of extra when you're doing your final cuts okay so now what i want to do is take a bit more wood away from here to allow me to go down Now normally on a goblet I would be putting a fillet at this stage but I'm not doing it on here because there will be that little bit of um, detail on the stem. bit of sanding on here just to get that turn it down a little bit this is just 240 again a couple of tool marks there let me get rid of that now A little bit of sanding just to just to get it looking a little bit better. I think the thing is with doing uh, especially a live demo, unless you're somebody like Wayne who can turn a <laughs> turn a bull in an hour and a half or whatever, it was a marvellous job he did. You always check Wayne out on a, he'd probably, I think about two or three times a week, Wayne the wood turner. Obviously does a lot more turning than I do, because I'm certainly not as quick as him, that's for sure. Okay, that makes it look a little bit better. Um, so I'll take now, uh, go back to my 3.8 spindle gouge and We'll just play with this a little bit. Not at that speed, we won't. Let's turn it up a bit.
actually I've already wanted to put a fillet on there, but I'm not doing it because I don't need it. get the parting tool and start to form your tenon. Bring that little shoulder down as well. Very light cuts because you've only got that little tenon. There you go. Now just size the tenon. I say normally what you would do is sand and finish. Oh, we're already there. So that's going to be a little bit loose, but it's not a problem because that's why you dish out the top. Okay, so we could just part this off. Turn it a bit. Oops, where are we? There we are. So now we've just done, I haven't, you don't, well, it depends how deep your hole is actually, but it actually fits in there pretty good. Especially when I get rid of that, which I'll just do that very, very quickly on the disc sander. Oop. It's the only problem with having a wired microphone. If you don't remember to feed out the wire, you run out of wire. <laughs> no. Just took that little nub off there. And let's just see. There you go. Whoops, there it is. And that fits in there nice. That little fillet there, it might actually need to be a little bit shorter. I don't know, it's okay. Uh, and that little fillet there, that little detail is what would normally be on on the base of the cup so you can see the idea where I'm coming from you've got that sorted now you've just got to do the base and it's all interchangeable you just glue that in and away to go right let's do the base let's have any questions again for a minute if anybody has any questions that is I'm going to take a quick drink Leona Fay, how are you? Sorry if I missed anybody that's... Oliver's wood turning. Right, Oliver is there. Mr. Ed Oliver is there. Um, and just to recap, I'm sure that most of you were here when I... S that's how I had my delivery of my stem centre. I also had a ball of wool. And absolutely amazed at the quality of the packing. And if Ed Oliver is still there, hopefully he is, because everybody else has seen this. Um, we've, my wife has knitted you a 
nice woolly at head to keep that lovely shiny head of yours nice and warm during the winter months and it, it can actually go over your eyes as well to shield you from the sun or from the reflection of said head in a mirror so all in all i think you hopefully will be pleased that'll be winging its way to you ed in tomorrow it'll be in the post for you mate and i'm keeping the rest of the wall okay i'm using it for other things <laughs> Oh dear. But I tell you, oh, lost the thing again. Excuse me crackling away, this, this microphone is playing up badly tonight. Sorry about this. There you go, stay. Yeah, um, we had a laugh, didn't it? Did we not, Ed? <laughs> oh dear. Right, okay, what I'm going to do, yeah, Matt, I'm glad you like the hat. I, I think in actual fact I'm going to get as a nip me another one, you know, because I like that. And the other thing is you can also use it if you want to, to be like, you know, completely incognito. And if I could do my, if I could manage to do my turning like this, it'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? You could call me something like the, the mis mysterious wood turner. Or the, um, or the idiot. I'm already known as that, I think. God, it's warm. What is it in here? Oh, 27 degrees at the moment. James, Mike, what do you do with all of your goblets? Do you have an outlet or a very, very big shelf? I've got a very, very big shelf, actually, James. I have sold a couple, a few, um, but most of them go to friends, well, ex-friends now, family, ex-family. Uh, indoors and in my lean-to, basically. Dave Stephen, Mike, as one of your new turners, thanks so much for all the advice I've already received from you. It's appreciated. My pleasure, Dave. Just do exactly the opposite to what I suggest and you'll be, you'll be fine, mate. You'll be fine. You're still laughing, Ed. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Martin is looking like Crow, the singer. Yes, Actually, I thought I looked a little bit like Heath Knuckles in that. Don't you think that's a bit, that's a bit Heath Knuckley, isn't it? Without the bobble, of course. But that's definitely Heath Knuckles' look. I haven't got his talent, but, you know, I've got a decent head anyway. Um, somebody did a super chat and I missed it. And thank you very much indeed. Let me go back on the... Uh, I can't see who it was. Whoever it was, you know who you are. Paul Collins, thank you very much. I appreciate it. This again is the uh, problem of not having help doing this. Okay, so um, this is an opportunity to make a square base like a pommel. Yes, it would be an opportunity to do that, but unfortunately the blank, you could do that actually, Frederick, on a serious note, not a problem. But uh, the blank is round, so I won't be doing that this evening. It's uncanny. What, the likeness to Heath Knuckles, Leona? <laughs> James, Ed Oliver, is there a specific spanner to remove the supernova from the lathe? Right, I can see that Ed's answering all the um, all the questions. Hi, the cat and the fish crafting. Hello. How are you? Oh, I'm honoured. First time you're here. That's great. Hopefully it won't be the last. I'm going to have a quick... Right, let's get on with the base and then we're done. So I'll go back to the overhead now and um, possibly <coughs> out of camera, have a quick vape. Yes, thank you. Steve Robbins is saying, don't forget thumbs up. Thanks for it. If, if you can remember to put a thumbs up, if you like it, of course, um, it helps the channel immensely. Okay, so now we're going to turn the base. And although these tools have a really good edge on them, I'm just going to put a quick edge on the tool on my half inch spindle gouge. 
And I know, yes, I know it's double sided, but I've used both sides. I'm going to do the other as well. And the reason for that is I slightly altered the uh, bevel on my half inch spindle gouge. So I now put it, I have it the same angle, 50 odd degrees, as my ball gouge because I only use it for remove, removing wood. You, you don't really need a half inch spindle gouge, I'll be honest with you. A, a, a 3 8 bowl gouge is more than adequate. Uh, will do a great job at removing excess wood. Okay, so now it's just basically a case of making a base. So, I happen to like... Actually, this might be a good, good opportunity to, to state something here because we've got a bit of wood to play with. Um, I don't want to waste maple, but there you go. When people design a base, I like a concave uh, shape to it going up to the stem. Um, I do see a lot of, with certain instances, yes, people will have either a sort of flat base, um, which I think looks a bit clumpy, as indeed having a convex base shape looks a bit clumpy okay for a chalice maybe a nice chunky chalice but for a goblet i just think it needs to be concave that's just a personal opinion i'm not saying for one minute that it's wrong to do it the other way but it doesn't appeal to me I think at this stage we're going to drill the hole after I've just faced that off there which will rest down a bit this is just a push cut just to face off the front and what I like to do is just take a skew and just put a little dimple in the middle just to give the drill bit, that's a bit small actually, just to give the drill bit somewhere to centre on. So I'll change the angles now, which would be normally be done by my film assistant. Let's turn that off, that's better. So I'm just going to take this out, out, and then put the Jacob's chuck in again as I say it's a it's a six mil six mil drill bit. Now at this point it is wise to see that you're yeah you want to go a little bit shy of that actually because I cut the tenon off a little bit short. It doesn't matter but um, you don't want the hole too deep. So I'll just go there. There we are. And that's nice and central as well. Now at this stage you see we could just try that in there. And that fits absolutely perfectly. Yeah, well pleased with that. A lot of this is um, it's almost central as well, which is not bad. So you can see where I'm coming from there. Okay, let's get rid of this drill bit out of here. And I know I'm prattling on about it, but the opportunities with these, you, you can do a load, of, a load of cups, you can do a load of um, bases, a load of stems, 
Um, and if you want to go finer, obviously, you'd have to use slightly less than uh, a, a smaller uh, drill bit. But it's all good practice and good fun. I'm just going to turn the light on again. Sorry about that. That's terrible. No, I'll, I'll work in the dark. Don't worry. And if I mess up, I can blame it on the fact I can't see what I'm doing. So that's the sort of shape I like. A... Um, a concave now again the beauty of having them already done or having this done you can see how far you need to go down and that needs to go down a bit further And what I must probably do is just just turn turn it over slightly as well. I think that, and again, would sand that up and finish it as well, obviously. Yeah, that looks quite nice. Quite happy with that. Okay, so now we part it off. Now we want to make sure, again, another thing I always take into account is the size of the cup to the base. And this is another ideal way. They're obviously virtually the same. Now, I, I personally think that the base diameter should certainly be virtually the same as the cup diameter. If anything, a little bit smaller, in my opinion, is better than a little bit too big because it looks clumpy. But that, again, as I say, is just my opinion. Now, we're not quite round there, actually, so it's going to have to go down a little bit. We've got a flat spot there, so we'll just take a little bit off here. Again, using the half-inch spindle gauge. And again, the important thing is to decide on the thickness of the base. Now, again, I don't particularly like it too thick. Um, and I think it's going to be actually going to be about there. And also, don't forget to undercut because um, you want it to sit nicely on the surface it's going on to. So I think, turn the speed up a little bit, I think we'll be looking at something like that. Yeah. Undercutting. Don't forget, this isn't a diamond parting tool. So make a bit of a relief. Don't actually need that much, but it doesn't hurt. Now, where we've got the bit of fuzzies here, where we've cut off, normally, as I say, you'd be sa I'd be sanding anyway. But when you've made that um, cut down to about here, then I would sand and finish. We'll just take the edge off there, make it look a bit better. 
this is only 400 just to give it a bit of a bit of a surface I don't see the point in spending time on finishing it because as I keep saying it's the method that I'm trying to get across to you so part him off Now at this stage, if you're not happy in catching it, you could saw it off, or, no I can't do it because I can't reach with my, uh, with my mic. It's got to say, sometimes I put a little container on here, especially when I'm doing small stuff. Um, Towards the end, very little pressure, just eat, nibbling away. Here we go, and that's your base. I'll just take that little nib off, take the nub off. Just use a off camera, I'll use a skew for that because people will be saying it's dangerous, which it is. So we'll do it off camera. And if I slice into my fingers, then um, it won't be on camera. Yes, that's sitting nicely. Okay, so back to the face, the ugly face. So we've turned, we've turned the bowl, we've turned the stem, and we've turned the base. So the bowl fits in there it's not a very tight fit that but it doesn't matter because it'd be glued and then fit that onto there and there's your goblet job done but as i say the basic idea is the theory behind it um, it's a great way of using up scrap bits of wood and uh, you, you could dare i say color it even and if you don't like the colour, you can just swap it out before you glue it. You know, excellent idea. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. So, uh, any questions, as they were, as one says. Right, let's, let's try and catch up. Should there be any questions? Thank you, Brian. Yes, don't forget the thumbs up, lads and lassies. It's much appreciated and does really help the channel. Uh, da, da, da. Yes, it's hot. <laughs> Try not woodworks. Hello, I presume you're from over the pond. Uh, Stuart, Mike. Will the oil in the Vera wood not affect the glue up? I know that lignum vitae doesn't glue well. Uh, it might well do. It might well do. Um, I'd be. I would use. I wouldn't use CA anyway. I'd use tight bond. So. I don't know. It'll be interesting. That, that's why. Thank you, Brian. That's extremely kind of you. Much appreciated. Um, to be honest with you, that's why it's to get your tenon and mortise as tight as possible is also a um, an important part of it, in my opinion. But yes, I, I'll find out when I glue it up. I'll let you know. <clears throat> Try a piece goblet next. <laughs> um, Derek, I've actually done a, a stave goblet with uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13 different, uh, bi uh, 13 bits of wood done in a, a sort of a mosaic pattern. That's about as near as I've ever got to doing segmenting. Yeah, and I, uh, that was great fun. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate you coming, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming, Leona. Appreciate it. Thank you. John Myers, first time viewer from Florida, welcome. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Neil. Hello, Neil, I didn't say hello to you. Apologies to anybody if I actually didn't say hello to you, but um, 
And whoever's here today, this is the quickest live I've done. Under an hour and a half, which is amazing. Mind you, it was a goblet, wasn't it? Um, so we'll sit back and have a bit of chatting, which I always like at the end of it. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Dave. Thank you. Um, uh, Joseph, he used Robert Sorby Pro, which I presume somebody asked Paul Smith. All oh, right, Paul Smith got you quickly. What sharpening system? I use the Robert Sorby Pro Edge. Uh, I used to be a CBN man, um, and I wish I'd found the Pro Edge when I started turning. Absolutely fabulous piece of kit. Can't recommend it highly enough. On the grinder and it works, but I'm fed up with having to keep on adjusting things. Yeah, uh, Graham Light said that he's got CBN. <laughs> to be honest with you, when I had the CBNs, it's always a bit of micro adjusting once you put the uh, tool up to the up to the wheel. With the Sorby, I'm amazed. It's it just bang, it's done, no problem. Once you've set it all up, it's not finished yet. No, it's not finished yet, Shay. No, you're right. <laughs> Hobby turned a question. Is the idea of this three-piece goblet so it's able to take down so you can take it camping? Yes, it's a space saver, the hobby turner. Yes, indeed. Ideal for camping or glamping, you know, whatever whatever turns you want. <laughs> there are so many ways you can use a three-piece goblet. Uh, thank you, James. Glad you enjoyed it. Cheers, mate. Appreciate it. Yes, of course I can, if I can find it. Haven't I broken it yet? No. There you go. Uh, try not. As I say, no finish apart from a bit, little bit of finish on the stem. Um, I just briefly sanded. Um, turn the turn the stem first. This is for try not. Put a six mil hole in the top there to receive the tenon on the bowl, and a six mil tenon on the base to go in uh, on the on this side to go into the base. Then I turned the bowl and left a slightly small tenon actually, but it doesn't matter because I dished out the top of the stem and then that fits in there and you glue that into there. And then when you've turned the base, you drill a hole and the stem fits into the base. Your designs, whatever you can do, obviously is up to you. As I say, don't look at the finish or the sanding finish because that's not what this is about. It's about the, the method. I hope that showed you. Thanks, Colin. Glad you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Andy. That's okay. I didn't know you were late, mate, because I was working away at the lathe. You want to drink red wine? Yeah. <laughs> uh, none of my goblets um, are for use. They're only for for um, for show. That's not a very good word, is it? As, as an ornament, ornamental. Um, but you can get. You, you could use um, a plastic coat or even uh, resin, uh, which is uh, li liquid resistant for using it for wine and beer or what have you. Mike, will you put up a pic if you put a finish on it? Yes, I will. Uh, when I get round to it, I will put a finish on it, yeah. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, well, actually, <sighs> Helen Bailey was an inspiration for me to think about doing it a couple of years ago, but I actually did a three-piece goblet on when I broke and I did a, I repaired it because it was out of Iroko and I did a Iroko um, and it, it went flying. So I did a, an Iroko base and I think I did a Zebrano uh, stem and with a bit of an off-centre turn on it. That's the other thing with this, off-centre turning is a breeze with this because if you mess up you just mess the stem. So it's a good way of practising as well, um, your off-centre turning. Just, just turning the stem basically. Dave Stephen, thanks so much, Mike. Something Glad you enjoyed it, Dave. Thank you, Dave Stephen. Keith P. Hello, Keith. Been watching over the last couple of weeks. You've actually inspired me to get out today to use the... Well done, Keith. I actually managed to make myself a basic ceiling rose to cover up damp, damaged ceiling. Well done, Keith. Keith P. is a guy that works with me. He drives me. He's on furlough as well. And he bought a lathe a long time ago. And he's used it for the first time today. <laughs> well done, Keith. Mark Williams... Thank you, Mark. Glad you enjoyed it. Nice to see you. Thanks very much. Do do do, Marty Woody's creations. Great demo. Thank you, Martin. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Cheers. Thank you. Damn, you missed it. Hello, Chris, my good friend, Chris Pooley. There it is, mate. 
just to show you, three-piece goblet, intentional stem. Stem was out of Vera wood, which is a very hard lignum vitae type wood. And then maple for the base with a, um, a mortise, a tenon on the end of the goblet, on the, on the bowl. And there's the goblet. Job done. That's for Chris Pooley, my friend. Well, we're all friends, obviously. Dutch doing a great demo. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. Cheers, Shay. Yes, Hampshire Sheen is food safe, yes. The Hampshire Sheen high gloss is food safe, yeah. If you prefer the round, uh, John M asked me if I prefer the round tool rest versus the bent flat. But no, it's not a case of preference. It depends how I feel. There are sometimes I prefer. The reason I use this one, it's only I don't know what it is, eight, six, eight, nine inches, something like that. It's it's not my my main tool rest is is massive, and for doing this sort of stuff, it's too unwieldy. Um, but I have got. A small one uh, which is a standard looking uh, standard type I just sometimes prefer the round one there's no preference to be honest with you that's very nice of you to say James I appreciate that thank you sir cheers Chris appreciate it glad you like it mate Frederick Day, am I still on leave? Yes, I'm still on furlough, Frederick, yeah. Um, I had a letter a couple of weeks ago that I'm going to be on till the end of July. Could be longer, don't know. Alcohol could dissolve Hampshire Sheen, though, live stream, Rob. Yes, it is not liquid proof. Um, the only wax, I think, which has got half, half a chance of being a bit liquid resistant is uh, hard wax oil. I can't remember who makes it now, but that apparently is very resistant. But I don't know if it's good enough to drink out of something permanently. As I say, you need something like a plastic coat. Chris Pooley, who's on here now, he does a lot of goblets and chalices that people drink out of, and he uses plastic coat mostly, and also resin. Hampshire Sheen, no, it is not, as I say, it is not uh, liquid resistant, but it is food safe and toy safe. That's brilliant, Patrick. You enjoy it. Let me know where you get on. Thanks, Grant. Glad you enjoyed it. Thanks for coming, mate. Thank you, Shay. I appreciate it. And thank you to everybody that has put likes up, because that does help the channel, as I say. You don't need anything inside but wine. No, but if you put enough wine in it, um, the cat and the fish crafting, put enough wine in it, I'm sure it'll enter the pores and it'll seal it itself. <laughs> I could actually I should put some coke in there and see uh, how long it takes to bleed through thanks Paul Mr Paul Smith glad you enjoyed it thank you for coming yeah you see I drink my coke from the bottle so why can't you drink your wine from the bottle I'm just going to change the picture slightly so I can have a quick vape if that's okay with everybody. I'm still here. I can still see what you're saying. Wine will preserve it. Yes, I, I'm sure the cat and the fish crafting, you couldn't give me a name, could you? I could call you the cat, couldn't I, I suppose? Mike Doyle, you are an absolute star. Thank you very much indeed. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Jay Lennon is saying, will you wear the hat on your next demo, Ed? I hope you do, mate. I'll be upset if you don't. I've got to wear it one more time. I've got to wear it again. I'm proud of that. I knitted that myself. I mean, people don't believe me, but I actually knitted that myself. And I only used... I only used one knitting needle. Yeah? So... Stop taking the mick. I'm very talented with knitting needles. <laughs> oh, Mick Stratton, show Ed Oliver that piece of spalted beech mic and make him drool. 
I will. Um, <laughs> Mick Stratton visited me a couple of days ago and he darkened my doorstep for the second or third time since I've known him. And he brought me a beautiful bit of spalted beach. I don't know actually whether my... Let's have a look. There it is. Oh. Oh. Look at that. Mick Stratton bought that for me. Look at that for spalting. That is a beautiful bit of wood. Absolutely gorgeous. Only trouble is it came from Newport Pagnall. But never mind. I mean, not everything is perfect, is it? Thanks again for that, Mick. And as I said when you came, you was very, very pleased with her box. Um, yeah, Mick brought a couple of bits of wood. I gave him a, I don't know, a bit of you, I think. And an old coloured plate that I had hanging about. <laughs> oh, dear. Simon Mason, another good demo. Thank you, Simon. Yeah, it is, actually. For, uh, Simon says it's a, a good option for using up smaller pieces. It's great for using bits of scrap. Pen blanks as well for the stem. Thanks very much, Steve. Glad you enjoyed it again. Thanks very much for coming. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Derek, I think I should wear it at the next club meeting when it opens. I need a good laugh. <laughs> yeah, Derek, you make sure he does. You make sure he does. It, it could go far, you know. That's all right, Douglas. Did you see the goblet, Douglas? If not, I'll um, I'll hold it up here for you. Here we are. This is for you. Know, this is for Douglas Mungum. What I should do, if I had a little stand there, I could have it next to me, couldn't I? But uh, I can't. Do 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 do. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> I could stick it on my head, actually. Uh, can you explain how you modified your own nose scraper? Uh, yes, Paul, very easily. Um, ah, depends which one you... That's that's one. Uh, this this is... Paul Collins has asked me how I modified my round nose scraper. Ah, you mean into the little bowl scraper. <laughs> Where is it? There we go. Okay. Um, it, it started life out like that which was, is an ordinary round nose scraper, um, a half inch round nose scraper, and I've turned it into a negative rake uh, goblet box scraper, if you like. And, and literally all you do is, if, that, if that's your, your wheel or your belt, you rock it back and forth to get the profile you want, like so, and turn it over and do the same again like you would a skew chisel basically, if you've got a radius on it like I have. And whatever radius you want, uh, bevel you want, I like 35, 35 and that's what this is. And that's all I've done, is literally swing it swing it on the, I've, I think I've got a video on it some, some in the dim and distant past, but they're very handy. It's not spalted, just a pattern. I actually painted it on Ed. Ed Oliver is saying that that spalted beach is not spalted. It's just a pattern. Well, it wouldn't make any difference to you, Ed, because you'd spray paint on it anyway, wouldn't you? Or drill holes in it. <laughs> and Ed Oliver said he can't wear his hat because it might mess his hair up. Well, I haven't got a lot of hair, Ed, but um, I'll tell you what, it is warm. It's 20... 28 degrees in here tonight, so I don't really believe what you'd be, you'll be all nice and sweaty, mate, when you get it. <laughs> oh dear. Mew laughed red off when I showed her that. And God bless her, she, she I mean, it looks like it, it's not very good quality, she, <laughs> she can't hear me. Um, she knitted that today, basically. <laughs> looks like it as well. Oh well. Uh, my pleasure, Paul. Thank you. Russell Fillmore. Thank you, Russell. Appreciate it. Thank you. Dave B. Oh, it's great to know you're back at it, mate. I'm glad to have been of uh, some, in not inspiration, but a bit of help. <laughs> uh, Mark says, which hair, Ed? Yes, I think it's the second one from the, from, from the middle, I think, Mark. That's the one Ed's on about, that one hair that he's got there. <laughs> He's not getting the wool back, Shay Lenahan. The wool is staying here. I got I gotta knit something else for that.
<laughs> yeah, actually, I could I could sort of put uh, my what wood turn it on there and keep it. I'll have one similar. But uh, I bet Karen unpicks this hat and uses it because I know you're a tight family, Ed. <sighs> Can I go off camera? Yes, I can go off camera. Oh, you just do that. Look, you can't see me now. You can have a look at my. Uh, you can have a look at that bit of wood down there. Look, that lovely bit of spalted beach. Look at it. Isn't it gorgeous. Thank you, Mick. I appreciate it, mate. You take care and thanks very much for coming. Hello, Pete. Twisted tree just arrived. God, it's cold in here. Can you see the condensation? My breath. <laughs> um, if you've only just arrived, thanks, Martin. Look forward to seeing you next time, mate. Take care. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. There we are, Pete. There it is. Uh, turn the stem first. Um, then turn the bowl, put a tenon on it. Drill the hole in the stem as a mortise, if you like. And then turn the, the base and drill the hole in there. So I've got a, a tenon on one end of the stem and a mortise in the other, or drilled hole, 6 mil, And then they just fit in like that. You glue them. But I say that the good thing is that as I say, if you don't particularly like a design or you don't like the colour match, I'm not saying this is a good colour match, it was just an example, um, that, thank you, Martin, Woody Creations, I appreciate it. You are a star, young man. Thanks very much. Um, it gives you a lot of options. And the good thing is that you can turn a load, get set up, turn a load of stems. Um, I actually turned the, um, the cup and the base from the same piece of wood. It was a piece of uh, just over six inches, I think. And I got, a fair, I got a bit left that I could do a little box out of it as well. So you don't need that much to do the, um, the bowl and the stem. But it depends what design you want. <coughs> Thank you, Rob. Thanks for coming, mate. Appreciate it. Glad you like it, uh, Pete. Cheers, Mr. Keith. Thank you very much. You're back at work from the 19th. Oh, I haven't checked my emails. Maybe I am as well. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I don't think I am anyway. Anyway, I'll speak to you again, Keith. Don't worry. Th thanks very much indeed. Appreciate you coming along, mate. <laughs> Karen's asked, has it got a couple of holes so she can use it as a tea cosy? Well, it's got one big hole here, Karen. Uh, do you want me to put a couple of holes in it for you, darling? I can do that quite easily. I'll stick it on the lathe. I'm sure you can knit your own tea cosy. Try not, uh, Bobby. After a wind and watch, I miss most of the demo. Have a great day, evening. Always an inspiration. <sighs> Bobby Gannon, thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it, mate. Don't get too bored watching the replay, will you? <laughs> I think I might should come round here a bit more. Excuse me. Thanks very much for coming. I appreciate it. Douglas Mungham, got a question on carbide. Where do the cutters have to be in respect to the centre line? Um, everybody does it differently. I, I didn't use a carbide cutter tonight, obviously, but I personally, if I'm doing it by hand, I like the cutter just below centre and turn at about sort of seven o'clock-ish. Um, it's a personal, it's a personal thing. But virtually you want the cutting edge not the cutter itself but the edge it cuts because don't forget it's like that the cut the cutting edge is down here you want that just just on or above center in my opinion um and that's what works best for me and when i set up the i mean ed Ol look at ed oliver's live stream if it's on youtube he did a bit of hollow in there with the six mil uh, the big six mil cutter which i've got as well which is brilliant um and I think he, he does it basically the same as me. And if I've got the easy arm jig where it's captured, I have it that way. I just tilt it about 10 degrees, something like that, and uh, have it just cutting on centre or just above. <coughs> I hope that answered your question, Douglas. Okay. If nobody's got any more questions this could be a world record for me an hour and three quarters it's normally well over two hours 
I'll give it till 20 past nine and uh, there's still 146 of you there. So if anybody's got any questions or wants to see the goblet that didn't see it, I can show it to you. Well, I can show it to you anyway. There's the goblet. Keep on. I do the same as you, Ed. I'm looking at the, I've only got three cameras and I'm looking at the wrong one. Ah, oh, dear. Got a video ready to upload. Nay, do it as a premiere to give people a chat window. All right. I shall look forward to that, Pete. I'll be watching, mate. My pleasure, Douglas. Uh, yes, I'm normally on Sundays at 7.30, Bobby. Um, that's while I'm off work. While I'm in, when I'm in work, uh, it might be every other Sunday, because I do work Sundays when I get back to work. Well, not every Sunday. But yes, uh, half past seven on a Sunday is my usual slot. And there are sometimes I'll have to miss one for whatever reason, but uh, I'll try and get every Sunday at 7.30. Okay, Pete, that's great, mate. You look at it, It's uh, you can always fast forward through the boring bits, which is 90% of it. Florida Bearded Fisherman, thank you very much for coming. Glad you enjoyed it. Appreciate it. Cheers, Ed. Thanks very much. Speak to you in a week, mate. You take care. <laughs> take care, mate. <laughs> Bye. And give my love to Karen. And Well, don't give my love to Joe, but give my regards to Joe as well. Jerry Dempsey, good afternoon from Ohio. Thanks, Mike. See you next week. Thanks, Jerry. I'm sorry I didn't welcome you. I was obviously turning at the time. Thanks very much for coming. Appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you next week, sir. Take care. The cat and the fish crafting. Great, mate. Uh, if you, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not trying to get subscribers. If you subscribe to my channel, you will get a, a notification when I put up. I schedule it two or three days before, so you'll get a an email letting you know. Um, that I'm coming up on the Sunday. Glad you enjoyed it, Derek. Thanks very much for coming again. I really appreciate your loyalty, my friend. I really do. Especially considering you know Ed, obviously. <laughs> oh, you are. You are subbed. Okay. The cat. What is your name, Cat, or would you rather not say in public? I'll just keep calling you the Cat. Then, then we're all, then you're happy. <laughs> Let's have a quick drink. Yeah, you should get you should get a notification, Cat. Oh, you just to <laughs> yeah. If you if you turn the notifications on and have the little bell and have all on there, it, it'll let you know everything that's going on. Glad you enjoyed it, Mark. Thank you, the gentleman Turner. I must try and get up to pay you a visit if you'd like. Yes, it'd be lovely. Yeah, uh, likewise, I'd like to meet you as well. Once this lockdown thing is over and what have you, um, then we can sort something out because you're not a million miles away, are you? I said three times, I think. Oh, it's Eva. Oh, God. Okay, but... Eva, what you've got to remember is I'm nearly 70 years of age and the brain goes, you know, memory is terrible. I don't even know where I am at the moment. I think I'm in the garage. Don't know where, though. Sorry, Eva. I Hopefully I'll remember that <laughs> next time you're on. You come in. Yeah, I, Derek, yes. Unfortunately, you know Ed Oliver, yeah. But I tell you what, mate, uh, on a serious note, I'm glad he's gone. He's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. He really is. We, we just hit it off and we have a hell of a laugh. He was... Um, when I rang him and told, when he sent that stem sender with this ball of wool, we were crying on the phone, honestly. Absolutely crying. Brilliant. Okay, guys and gals. <coughs> Thanks very much, Eva. I appreciate it. You, you, must, you must make allowances for us old folk, you know. Douglas, it's gone. What's gone, Douglas? I'm still on, I think. What's gone, Douglas? I'm going anyway, but what's gone? Yeah, I, I should say, Derek. 
I'm hoping when lockdown's over, I gotta go come down and spend the day with Ed, and uh, hopefully I'll meet yourself as well. Thank you, Paul Collins. Glad you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for coming. Hope to see you next time, mate. Oh well, we're not. You're not alone then, Eva, <laughs> with a <the> memory. <laughs> Oh, the mind. Yes, Douglas. Yeah, the mind's gone. The, oh, my mind went years ago. Calling to my wife and friends, etc. Well, I've got any friends. They call me no mates. Billy, no mates, really. No, I, uh, I don't know. As you get older, I, I think what it is is there's there's so much rubbish to remember now um, that you tend to forget a lot of things, don't you? I mean, it's not rubbish when someone tells you their name and you forget it two seconds later, but um, brain overload. Greetings from Arlington, Texas. Thanks for all the great tips, Mike. Ya valio kaka watties. <laughs> or waits, sorry. Kaka waits. M. Okay, I don't know what your name is, but thank you for coming in and I'm glad you enjoyed it from Arlington, Texas. I appreciate you popping in. Right, okay, I think that's it. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I look forward to seeing you all again next Sunday and in the following week. Take care and above all, obviously, stay safe and don't do anything silly. So I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Take care now. Cheers.